your guys on Saturday night? Yeah, that was a great team effort all around. Uh, just a, it was a fun game to be involved in, and guys played extremely hard throughout the whole game, and, and you know that that's the key. You come out of the ton tunnel swinging and finish that way. How about your group specifically? Very pleased with them. You know, uh, Ambry gave up a couple throws at a big guy, a uh, couple things he, you know, we talked about it obviously, and if he did a little, couple little things different, maybe that didn't happen. But, you know, in our position with all the man we play, we talk about it all the time, they're going to catch footballs. And it's how you handle it after that that, that, that is what matters. And I'd say we, the outcome was favorable. And those throws and catches were pretty high quality. They were yeah. very high quality. That, that's a good receiver. Mm -hmm. Clay, he's a big, strong guy. A lot of kudos. And a guy that stays on the field and plays special teams, too. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but Claypool's a, he's a special player. Pretty good. What's been the key to this defense as a whole? I mean, stopping the run the past few games. Yeah, well, you know, Coach Brown is very adamant about stopping the run, and we practice, practice, practice stopping the run. So we spend a lot of time in practice working on the gaps, you know, we're a gap defense. It's everybody in their gaps building our walls, and I think that's a big key of it. Everybody knows their assignments very well, and uh, everybody's in their gaps. It sounds simple, but it yeah. always isn't, you know. So but that's, that's what, are the what we're key doing. Player traits then to succeeding with with Don Brown's approach to the run. Key player traits: toughness, smart. Sure. smart you know, every, all the things you want in a, in a good football player, right? Tough, smart, fast, strong, all those <laughs> kind of things. But, you know, just really being assignment sound helps you so much in the run game because you know where you got to fit, especially when a team has a lot of pullers. You know where you got to go and fit. So that, I think that's pretty much the key. Not trying to bring back a bad memory, but a couple games ago, the, the big play to Hamler, what happened on that? Yeah, it was just play? bad communication, you know, and, and it, uh, one guy thought it was this, the, the other guy thought it was that, and we should have had a post safety. You know, he wouldn't even run that route. He would have broke it off, I'm sure, and run a different route. So that was a little frustrating to, to you know, to give him the, the six points, but they saw it and took advantage of it, so hats off to them. But... That's what happened. There was just some miscommunication with the call. Is that a function of the, the whiteout, or I mean, at this stage in the game, are you no, this season? I, are I, you surprised I, it happened? I, yeah, I was a little surprised. I, I don't, I don't know. You know, there's some calls that may sound the same, mm -hmm. and I think that might happen. It seems like you guys are playing more zone defense. What is that process of adding that to your repertoire? Before? Well, it, it's you know we play, we have been playing a lot more zone, and and. I, I think it's helped in a lot of aspects, especially in the passing game, because they're not expecting it. Um, but within the, all that zone coverage, we're still pressuring. So that is a big plus for us and a, and a big part of the success in the run and the pass game. Well, what does it look like for you as a teacher versus like when you guys are talking strictly man, you know, the past couple of years versus this year, there's a lot more zone? Uh, it's all the same. We basically have two coverages. The single high stuff, man stuff, and then the eagle concept. So we've been doing it, we've been teaching it. Shoot, this is my fourth year doing it. So it's been there, just probably not as visible as it has been in the past. So I guess what's the reason behind using it more often this year versus in previous years? Because um, it's working. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think, you know, not being a smart ass, but I think because it, it's just, it, it, it's working and it's working in the past game too. So it just gives a little different flavor, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess overall, as a coach philosophy, do you feel like defenses have to stay fresh? And you can't really show an opponent one thing over years. And it, you know, it. yeah, that, that's a great point. I think every week, you know, and every week, Don does add, add a little different flavor in, into it, a little change in the pattern here and there. So yeah, you, you have to, you have to make changes weekly, but the core of it pretty much stays the same, and that's how you get better. How different is this, is this Maryland offense compared to last year's? Yeah, the, I think they're scary mm -hmm. because I think there's a lot of talent there. You know, I watched the Howard game. I just got done watching the Syracuse game. They're just missing a click somewhere. 
you know, and, and we can't be the opponent that they come and get better on. We, you know, they have talent. They have really good running backs. Tight ends are good, and the receiving core is pretty good. And the number seven has got 31 catches. I mean, that, that, that's a lot of production. So we certainly can't fall asleep. They are a good football. Underneath whatever happened to them, there's a good football team underneath that. You know, we got to come out, like I said earlier, we, we got to just come out of the, the, the locker room swinging and, and get ready to play a good game. Do you get the sense this week that it's a little more personal for Josh Gaddis coaching against Locks? <laughs> yeah, against Locks, yeah. It, it, I'm sure it is for, for Josh, <laughs> big time. Have, sure were you, did you read any of the, the little commentary? I don't read the paper. <laughs> Well, I mean, it was being talked about on the radio, too. Wow, that really hurt. Yeah, I remember, remember I, I played in Philadelphia. So you talk about yeah, true. not wanting to read or listen to the radio. That's one place. You, that's where I learned. So Did they like you in Philly? <laughs> I'd like to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not my last year. But... <laughs> speaking, do you think it's easier for a player from defense to become an offensive player? Uh, I, don't, I don't know that, Angelique. That's a good question. I, I know I think I'd be a hell of an offensive coordinator. You know, so... <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> you know, I, but uh, you just... I think being on the defensive side of the ball so long, you, you get a different feel, different view. Mm -hmm. You know? So I, I think... You know, I think it's pr proven that he's he can do it. So I was just thinking about Haskins. Yeah, you know, I was yeah. thinking about you know being a linebacker and then now being a running back. Right. And, right. I mean, you've seen but you know you've seen defensive players who've well, off. that's a lot. A lot that has to do with that is vision. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're a good linebacker, you're going to be a good running back because mm -hmm. you're going to see the color. Boom. You're going to be able to see the, the change in, in the lanes. So I think that fits. That makes sense. Jim Kelly was a linebacker. Yes. Yeah. Did you know that? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah. So what would be your hashtag if you were offensive coordinator? I would have high school quarterback. I know, but, he, you know, Gattis is speed and space. What would be yours? Oh, I'd put I'd two backs in the backfield. And bang, pow, pow. Power all day. <laughs> hashtag power all day. That's it. Ben Mason will be back there for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. How are you young guys doing, DJ and, and the other guys? DJ's coming along great. It really has. Yeah. Um, you know, Vincent Gray, he's getting a lot of action. He's playing quite a bit. Jamon Green, he's starting to show development, probably a spring away from being a pretty dangerous guy back there. And then, and then DJ, um, for just coming in here in the summer, you know, doing very well, very well. What are his strengths? He's fast, he's strong, and he's physical. You know, and, and the same with Jamon. You know, it's the same with Vincent. You know, young guys that are got some good left to them. On, and, and we're physical and can run. This, at this point in the season, how much does the coaching staff get together and talk about maybe like, hey, should we get some true freshmen in the game or trying to preserve the red shirt at this point? Yeah, there's there's a lot of that. It happens pretty much once a week. Yep. And, it, you know, if, if we're trying to win a game and we need a guy, chances are he's going to play. But but if, if that isn't involved, you know, Let's save them. Let's keep them around. So like if we can. The opponent plays a big big role in that? Excuse the me? The opponent plays a big role in that? Yeah, or injury. You know, I think injury more than anything. Uh, you know, does a guy go in the game just to go in the game, or, you know, do we really need him? And I think that it's need more than just letting him play, in my opinion. He's not one of your guys, but Jordan Glasgow, what, is he, Glass. what does he bring to this defense? He brings great effort. The guy works. He he just works his tail off, man. And uh, and he, and he's a smart player, mm -hmm. very cerebral. Maybe sometimes too cerebral. But what does that mean? Uh, he just you can you can sometimes hear him computing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> on the field you can hear. Him. <laughs> well, I love him. I mean, the guy just he plays hard every play, and he knows what he's doing. So he, he's always seems to always be in the right spot. Uh, he's he's. Really good. Smart's good though. No, right? no, I mean, smart I mean, is great. Do you smart think maybe he overthinks something? I just, I just kind of have a little jab with him. Oh, That's really? All. Yeah. But no, he, he, if we had 11 of them, you'd be happy. You know, he's, he's a 
he's a hell of a well, He sort of joked because Harbaugh had made that joke about having a hundred of them, and he said, "Well, I don't think you'd really want a hundred of you know his body type and his <laughs> right. athleticism." But he does. Right. Is, is he the type of guy who makes up for maybe what he lacks? He's not a five star. He's not a Dex, but you know, but with his smarts, his his work ethic. Mm-hmm. I think it's his work ethic, mm-hmm. and and I think people don't give him enough credit athletically. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can run, and he's strong. He, he's pretty damn good. He's a good football player. I think you'll be seeing him on Sundays, too. Do you? I do. Heck, yeah. Think of him special teams. Yep. He'd play all four of them. And, he, and you wouldn't be afraid to – I wouldn't be afraid. You've seen the production he's had. I wouldn't be afraid to put him in a, in a game. I think he's, he's going to be – he'll be out there with his brothers. <laughs> pretty cool. Could Dax Hill play corner for you in a pinch? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely he could. Yeah, he's a, he's a talented kid, man. Really talented. He's going to be dangerous once he gets to know this system. He really is. How far away is he from really knowing it? Yeah, a spring. You know, mm-hmm. once once he gets gets this year done and gets, gets in the spring ball, I, I think it will be lights out from there on. He's a guy that you can use in a number of different ways and will tinker with in the spring doing yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's yes. inside now. And yep. he, you know, Angelique, he can be outside, and certainly inside, inside, you know, in the post. Yep. So he can he can do a lot of things for us, for sure. Jim said on Saturday that losing and then responding in the way that, that your team did was an important lesson. What, what have you seen as far as what have they learned? What did you see from the response? And then yeah. how can a win – catalyze, I guess, the rest of the season a little bit. Uh, well, what I saw after that Penn State game was a really determined group of guys coming out Tuesday for practice. Uh, probably one of the best Tuesday practices I've ever been around. So they were they were very determined to show, uh, you know, not, I think, to show the nation that what you saw the other night isn't really what we all, what we are, you know. We could be we could be better coming out of the locker room for sure, but you know that second half and how we played that is us, and I think they made that statement Tuesday and it carried over on the Saturday. And that, that's what we got to do going forward these next four games, big time. Do you think the success on more? Saturday can kind of validate? Hey, if you come out on Tuesday, it'll show. Yeah, I, I think yeah, and and they did the same yesterday. It was a, Really, another good Tuesday practice. So, I, it, it, you know, I, I, I really believe, as I said earlier, they're starting to see like a, a starting to form a team and a belief. You can see it. I certainly can feel it. So, it's a good thing. That line is very thin, though, from collapsing after a second loss and, and, and then doing what they've done. Does that come from the players, you know, that they encourage, or is it all, you know, no, the coaches? I, you know what? The, I think it's I think it's their experiences, mm-hmm. They're playing in these games, being around these games, and then you know you start to form a callus, and, and I and I hope that that callus keeps building, and, and I think it will based on what we've seen the last two weeks and, and yesterday in practice. Hopefully that will keep growing. So maybe it's more coming from them. I think, think so. I, I think it is. It's I not really you do. yelling at them or any of them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, I mean, I, we have to do, we do our job, but at the same time, I, they, I, I think there's something burning in them. I really do. The way pass interference is being called and not being called, does that change the way you, you coach? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, does that change the way that you yeah. coach? No. Okay. Not at all. Um, is it frustrating? It, it, it really yeah. is. It, it, it really is frustrating, you know. I come to work, I'm held accountable every day. I, and I know the Big Ten take care of the official stuff, but it, it should, there should be some more clarity on it. I mean, that call was not interference, but I, I got to stay in my little foxhole, do my job, coach my guys, and then officials take care of the officials. But, yeah, if it would be nice if it was a little clear. Do you wish that they had replay on that? No, I, I personally, I'm not a big fan of replay. Yeah. I think people rely on it too much, and it kind of loosens the, in my mind, it, 
it, they're too relaxed. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I, let's just go up to, to the video booth and let's see what they say. You know, rather than old time, oh, wait, uh, no, we'll keep it right here. You know, that, but that's me. Those questionable PI calls, did you guys submit those to the Big Ten for review? Yeah, they do. Yeah, we submit all questionable calls. Do yeah. they come back with you or sponsors? I don't know. I, I, that would be a question for David. I, I haven't seen any of that. What do you think they saw on that play? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. I, I, I wish I could answer that, but I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Maybe he had a bad view, bad angle. <laughs> I think everybody had a good angle on that. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's unfortunate. How about the Nico play the week earlier? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. <laughs>